What's up, everybody? You're listening to the best of Obsidian Radio, the live stream show heard only on YouTube. Check your local listings at your nearest O-Man Radio affiliate station for show times and scheduled guests and dates. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy the best of the Obsidian Radio, the live stream show. Watching uh, a little bit of John McWhorter. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but I was watching a little bit of him talk about the uh, police and all the rest of it while waiting for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, we're on the air, and uh, uh, you're listening to Obsidian Radio, the live stream show. It is 39 minutes past the hour. This is the private version of uh, what we had earlier on the show. My special guest is Kevin Samuels, the image guy. And uh, we're going to continue and pick up where we left off on the show. You're listening to this it's because we didn't meet the goal. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. We didn't meet the goal. And so I had to cut the feed. And we're picking it up here privately for all of you private members. I really appreciate your support. So without further ado, we're going to continue where we left off. Yeah, Kevin, Um, yeah, I, I really was bothered by what I heard last week. I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really did. Uh, it was a, it was a really like it was a bucket of cold water, to tell you the truth. And uh, so, you know, no problem. Uh, you know, I see I got to do things different. And so I did. I mean, I'm 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 really tired of black men who are supposed to be a cut above doing the same shit that the mm-hmm. uh, ostensible trifling black men do. I, I'm really I'm really I'm tired of it. Well, you know, um, so you you said something that I have to agree with. That as much as you hate to. Go ahead and have to agree with one Cynthia G that you hear black women talk about these good black men playing like they're good, but they really ain't. Oh, yeah. That's a major talking point. Um, It has been it has really come about as a result of the past year and a half better part of two year long very public debate some refer to it as the Pookie and Ray Ray debate others refer to it as the educated lame debate however you want to define it yes quite a few black women have gone on the record I mean Cynthia G is not alone Nyla says mm-hmm. said it mm-hmm. Crystalline Karazin has said it that um, you know a lot of the good black men quote unquote you know, uh, respectable black men, college-educated black men, they're just as trifling as the Pookie and Ray Rays. Well, and and this is where it becomes important for the dude, the brothers to see this shit, to call it out. Because we, we have this thing in, in the black community, especially around black men. We, 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 we start playing dumb real quick. You know, Brothers be acting like, you know, they don't know, they don't understand what's going on. And and what I what it really equates to is it's just another hustle. It's 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 a long con. Basically, that's why I've learned to ask clarifying questions. What you saw on that stream was when I basically have have gotten to the point to where when I I just drill down on the question. And when when you won't answer a question directly, you paint yourself to be 
no different than anybody else. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, you're worse. Let me tell you yeah. why you're worse. Because at least Pookie and Ray Ray can say they don't know no better. Yeah. You know, w- what excuse do brothers who are making, you know, no kids, middle class, who who will put their bona fides out here and, and self-proclaim good black men thinking black men that was that shit was shameful man and yeah. that's why it ran my blood pressure up because you basically removed all excuses and when you remove all excuses you got to get down to the fact that you got men who were sitting here in your face eating at your house, eating you out of house and home, drinking up all your liquor, sucking up all your air conditioning, using up all your gas, and then looking at you like you crazy. Like like you shouldn't, like you should be just be happy to make $24,000 a year and live in a one room efficiency. Yep. And, and that's some bullshit because black men have enough. We already know the deal. We should be, it should be 180 degrees opposite. It was disappointing to see so many brothers that were that full of shit. That's just really what it came down. So, so disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, um, I, I, I you know, <laughs> when pre, I am just going to go ahead and say, it. when pre, <laughs> when you asked him straight up, what the deal was, and he was like, "Come on, man!" I was like, "And, and it's funny, my lady friend was listening at the time. <laughs> she heard it, and she just slowly shook her head. I couldn't even say anything, man. I couldn't even look her in the face. It, it, it was, and where I was, I was. It was dry. While I was in the car, and I was driving, and it was iced on the wind. Dude, I just had to pull over because I'm like, I can't believe we're having this conversation. You can't even just admit that." You really don't want this brother to make any money, or, or not? Not you don't want this brother to make. Money. You don't want to give. You don't want to pay him. And see, what I can't, I do not like. There's no honor amongst thieves. Yeah, I can't stand a thief. I just can't stand a thief. You know, a dude to tell you I don't want to pay for your shit, but a dude that's just gonna try to hustle and that shit. I'm just like, you know what, man? This is some bullshit. And we can get farther without cats like that. What that kind of attitude? Look. We got to get to the point to where black men start taking themselves seriously. On my channel, I talk about the, being a modern savage. And that and a modern savage entails being a modern gentleman. And what I call the modern gentleman is you have to be a, a, a gentleman warrior scholar, which means you have to have something you talked about today, honor. There has to be honor between men. You said it. You can't play golf with niggas. Nope. Because there are no referees. And you got to be able to self-govern. You know, you shouldn't have to ask a brother to, you know, I shouldn't have had to even break the numbers down the way I broke it down. You know what you know what channels you're supporting and not supporting. You know what you say, you know what you say out of your mouth. Then just put the money on it. But when you basically talk about we need you need to go get advertisers for it, that's just dude, really? I mean the shit was disappointing. So yeah, 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 and, and and the thing about it was, I understand why they said that because they don't want to pay for it. And that's what that is. So I I would be better if this you say you don't want to pay for it, then cool. Say that straight up, and then go go get in the chat, go get in the uh, comment section. That's cool. You don't want to pay for it, but you don't have to sit on the panels consistently undermining the message. Look. Your panel, your platform actually allows the average everyday brother a chance he's never had in his life to be heard. Yep. And to me, my sense of honor, my sense of gratitude, that's something that I would be glad to pay for because I've never had it. Right. But again, I I had to step back and start realizing that the pathology in Black America is such that what do you say? Uh, many different webs of dysfunction. Oh yeah, entangle pathology, man. Entangle pathology, but see, 
And this is where as content creators and as business, and as, I'm going to just say as entrepreneurs and business people, this is where we got to draw the line and say, I don't give a fuck. I don't care that your, your, your situation is fucked up. Mine was too. You got to go figure that out because you don't walk into nobody else's business with that, with that shit. And that's what I'm sitting. I tell you, I get a, an email every other day, some hard luck story. Oh, bro. Uh, I see you doing videos on these for, hook me up. And I'm like, I filtered it out. I've, I've gotten to a standard on my channel to where it's, it's less, but I'm offended when black men approach me like that. I am offended because you already know what the black male stereotype is. Yep. And to approach and to approach another business person like that is offensive. And what it really comes down to is if they don't see your business as a business dude they got some problems because short sightedness is going to kill uh, them before it will kill you dude what you're doing right now I mean let me take a step back Tommy Sotomayor actually was on the Vivica Fox little show uh, last last week right Yeah, yeah I heard about it okay well then uh uh Big John, Mick Towers Freedom was on CNN. Yep. Men's rights, the men's movement, the manosphere is going mainstream. You see what I predict, what you said, 2019, the black manosphere is going to, it's going to be ascendant. Then you're going to have, then they're going to be just like a bunch of these Johnny come lately, them chicks that wouldn't, that wouldn't fuck you in high school, but now, you know, you hear late mid thirties and like, oh, now you own. No. Now is the time to help and support. And the, the the bad part is that the bad problem is there's the case has been made. The case has been made. There are no excuses. So what we're really having to look at and say, damn, are black men in mass competent? Right. How, how many of us? I mean, are we in the minority? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the thing I really learned over the past few years is because so so much stuff was really unknown uh, for whatever reason. And we can we can get into the speculation because I like to hear what you have to say about it. But for whatever reason, black folks in general, but we're talking about black men in particular, we like that folk wisdom stuff. We, we don't like talking about specific numbers and data and crunching numbers. And citing sources for whatever reason, we we seem to have an aversion to that. And what I found over, excuse me, over the past few years, as I went and you know did my own little investigation, I found little by little a lot of things that we cling to just aren't true. Like the idea that we so broke, but well, that's not true, man. I'm sorry, it's just not true. It's just not true. Now I'm not saying that we you know every individual black man. There's a baller, you know, rolling around in money. But what's clear is that the rank and file black man is far from broke. Right. You know, so, so, uh, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, most brothers ain't in jail. I mean, you know, we can go, we can tick them all off. And it's understandable why a a number of black women don't want to hear it. For example, we talk about Cynthia G for that matter, Kristen Carson. I mean, a lot of black women are wedded to the idea that black men ain't shit and when you present to them evidence to the contrary they're going to vociferously fight against it I get that Mm -hmm. but black men you know when presented with the evidence of what of where we truly are still don't want to act right it does make you raise questions about something it's it's something's not right here something isn't isn't uh isn't working and then when you get these bullshit excuses about men you know, consumers have to spend their money. They have a right to spend their money the way they want and all this other nonsense. My thing is, is that, OK, so what you're telling me is, is that you don't want to support in, the, in that particular instance. It was rolling mine. I said, OK, I, I, I can get that. So what do you recommend? And I get static. Nothing. I get no response. Well, I tell you, I, 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 I've shared this story about when I was a salesperson, how I sold in on the black side of uh, Dallas, yeah. and I couldn't get black people to buy from me. And then I and then I got promoted to a manager, and I hired a, a little blonde-haired white girl. 
Right. And I took her back to the same south side of Dallas and I told her to act like you're my manager. I'm act like you're the sales rep. And those very accounts, I couldn't close. I was closing them left and right. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there just comes a point in time where you look at some of these men, it's like, all right. You don't even. Anytime a black man is doing something, it's looked at with the side eye. Sadly. Sadly. And, and, and that was, I was getting at that kind of sort of with the Zaza Ali issue mm-hmm. is that w- whatever the particulars are in her case aside for whatever reason in black America we have this 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 perception this problem of impropriety for whatever reason mm-hmm. and and the re- one of the main reasons why I do what I do was in response to just that you talked about Tommy Sotomayor then there was Dr. Umar Johnson. Both of them were attempting to do big projects. They were soliciting money from the public and they didn't make good on it. And yeah. a lot of people were saying it's a scam. It's a fraud. And it really affected me because I'm trying to, you know, do this black male media thing and get it off the ground. And I was concerned that Sotomayor and Johnson being the black men of considerable stature that they were, that their taint was going to rub off on me. So what I decided to do was, as you know, I learned, you know, a long time ago, the best disinfectant for anything is sunlight, man. Mm-hmm. Just be transparent, you know, post it up there, post the numbers, what you get or whatever, how big or how small do that. And nobody can accuse you of tricking the money off or what happened to this or Where's the business plan? So that's what I did. I came up with a business plan and I, you know, released annual reports and stuff like that. And to this day, nobody has accused me of tricking money off or accused me of not delivering on goods and services, stuff like that. But the problem with that is, and to tell you the truth, I, I can't say I'm I'm surprised that it hasn't moved enough black men to do what they need to do. And I'm not surprised by it because I already knew going in, they want to find an excuse, man. Mm-hmm. They want to find another. They're going to shift the goalposts and find another excuse. Well, you know, I, I look at it as when you're used to not winning so long, you get content. See, it, it, if black male media comes along and we start changing the image of black men, you got a lot of these dudes gonna have to learn how to compete. See, some of these dudes are used to being being better than Pookie and Ray Ray, but you're not. But you're not better than the rest of your, your your counterparts out there to your competition. You're not really ready for the world. So I'm sitting here looking at these dudes because I'm sitting. When you're sitting there talking, I'm like, dude, I'm still thinking. We're, we're talking like $20 a month. That's $250. That's less than a pair of uh, Jordan sneakers that a lot of these dudes have bought in their lifetime. <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about a substantial amount of money when it really gets down to it. And I'm looking at the cross section. If you had to just take, if you had 300 people watching on your channel, if you just looked according to the numbers, 40% of the guys in there gotta have, gotta not have children. So that's yep. what, 140, 140, yep. 130, 140. And yep. then they gotta be making at least. $35,000 a year on an average. Yep. So if you're making 33, dude, cancel Netflix, cancel something. You don't have the money, cancel something. I mean, we have given so many different ways to do this. And when I don't even go along with that though, Kevin, because when you go to uh, uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson's channel, I guys know. giving money hand over fist. So, so there's something else going on there. And, and tell you the truth, I, I'm I, I don't give a shit anymore. Nope. I don't. I'm, not, I'm, I'm done trying to figure out what the problem is. Mm-hmm. I, as far as I'm concerned, uh, yeah, I'm very comfortable doing shows like this from here on out. Well, I think that's the best thing because you know I'm a problem solver. You're a problem solver. But that's what frustrated me so much. I'm like, why am I? Why are we having to solve this issue? I think either you either you put the money up or you don't put up. But see, what's going to happen is when you start to pull it back and scale it back to the people who are really down for it, your your money's not going to really change. I mean, but you'll be you'll what you'll end up doing is producing the show for the guys who want to see it. And the other ones, because I, I saw in the chat room people like, well, 
time to go to so and so's channel. And I'm like, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I'm like, y'all think this is a game? I'm like, but that's okay. Then you're not, and that's the thing. Then you're not a part of the movie. Then because there are some people who are gonna just be casual watchers. So what we're really trying to see is where your numbers are, where any of the numbers are. But that's what the guy. Well, that's what bothered me so much about that conversation we had. I thought everybody. I know everybody I talked to has said out their mouth that they they gonna support. It's not as though I was talking to people who didn't understand support. Everybody right. said they were going to do it. Right. So while I said what I said on the air about a lot of, and I got to say, man, I got to, I got to, you know, with all due respect to the sisters, I got to say they got a point. You know, there are brothers who believe that all they need to do is just say shit. And that's that. Right. S- say it. And then when it's like, all right, um, <laughs> you know, in my business, I deal with a lot of brothers who've gotten by uh, a lot on their looks. Yeah. And they didn't have to develop anything else. And I'm like, dude, you you call yourself socially awkward or something. No, you're an asshole. You have a lot of brothers have gotten by just on, have gotten through on this hustle thing in life. A slick mouthpiece. Uh, you know, never really had to learn how to really get out there and work or go anywhere else so then they so it's that like that hood mentality you're comfortable in the in the hood in the ghetto in the ghetto you carry and you carry that hood everywhere you go so you can't talk with any other group of people you, you're not comfortable around hispanic people asian people white people the only folks you're really comfortable around is black folks it's hood is hood black people it, yeah because you know what's expected you know, you know the ebb and flow, and what it is. I, so I don't. Want, and in order to have black male media, you're gonna have to have men who are able to grow and do more than that. Because if not, you're just gonna end up having black exploitation 2.0 in black male media. Pretty much, and I don't mean any disrespect to O'Shea or anything like that. But and for that matter, Tommy Sotomayor. But uh, you know, and at the risk of sounding like I'm. Uh, patting myself on the back I, I don't do what they do I'm not, I'm not I'm not knocking them or anything like god bless them but i'm not i'm not trying to do that i mean i i see that in a way as kind of staying in the hood and i you know i the hood is part of black america no doubt but it, it, I, I see i envision my show as bigger than that i remember when bet was still a force and I, it missed such a major opportunity. I was like, why does BET only play reruns of 227 and this and that? I was like, BET never took on the chance to, to make a, the new A Soldier story. It didn't take on the opportunity to do like HBO and make um, original movies. It was just content to take other people's... BET was the place where black shows went to be relaunched and all of, at the end of the day would you really want to advertise on that would you really want to work on that think about a lot of black radio the black in in oklahoma city we had no black radio stations and then when we finally got a black radio station it was a.m wow it came on at six o'clock in the morning and here's the thing obsidian it was hit or miss it was like we couldn't we we <laughs> yeah and the funny thing is it's still like that to this day wow black radio never really took a foothold here because just like the black newspapers that died i mean we've we've seen this model the black media has gone because we had to rely on advertisers because we could not get circulation now, for I think what happened in hindsight is good because one, I'm hearing you finally start setting some standards and parameters around your business, which is always good for any of us. And then I love to see black men who are working hard, getting what they're worth, being able to command and stand on their value because I'm tired of seeing us cut our prices when, when, when somebody's charging $100 an hour, we're charging 30 but we're still giving out 
quality information. One hundred dollars. They want thirty dollars a, a fee for a hundred dollar work. So that's another. That's another hustle and de- and, and depravity that a, a lot. It's sad to say, a lot of black folks in this case, black men, they want they want the hundred dollar service. They just want to pay thirty bucks for it. That's bullshit. Well, see, I, and, I'm not doing that. See, and the other on the other side of it, they'd be upset if if all of a sudden some white person came along and so let's say some white advertiser white conglomerate said hey obsidian we love what you're doing we would love to be angel investors and underwriters into you and we would love to just partner with you and maybe we come in for 20 percent, and we'll give you four hundred thousand dollars a year operating capital and then if you start doing it oh see now you sold out see it get mad when brothers sit around like like alan my frat brother alan he talks about how a large portion of his, his business was white, was, was not black men. Oh, yeah. So Alan, Alan has gone on record in saying uh, publicly. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything. I'm not talking about on his back or anything like that. And he and I have been at sword's point like a motherfucker in recent days. But I will say oh, this yeah. for him. I'll say this for him. He's gone on record publicly in saying that if he had to rely on black men to buy his books and purchase his consulting services, he'd be homeless. We well, said that publicly. And and I know I know uh I know several dating coaches that are like that. Most of them. I will say that. And see that's what I'm thinking. As black men, that should bother you. Well it it bothers me, but as I'm starting to realize maybe it's we're just the smallest segment of people. Black men have lost a lot of shame and a lot of pride. I'm like that. That should bother you. Well, I mean, for since we're talking about Alan, uh, a lot of black men are narcissists. See, this is the problem. See, like I said on the, on the air, it really hit me like a ton of bricks, like a, a bolt from the blue. Because going back to what you you said, you and I are problem solvers, and something my lady friend said to me the other day, and in it, in aligned right up to it, she said you are attempting to use rational means. To mm-hmm. understand irrational people mm-hmm. And that's when it just hit me There is a lot of Mental dysfunction In black American life Both on the male and female side but We're focusing on the male side of it And it's so ubiquitous And so commonplace And it's going on for so long Without being called out Or diagnosed That we have accepted it as normative Mm-hmm. We have a lot of black men who are narcissists, and part of being a narcissist is to be exploitive, being exploitative of others. Part of being a, a narcissist is being manipulative. Mm-hmm. Part of being a, a narcissist is being shameless. Those are the traits of narcissism. You know, and we got a lot of narcissistic. I hate to say it like that. But it's true. We have a lot of narcissistic dudes among, in our midst. You know, you know, Cerulean Gray talks about how the United States is a narcissist manufacturing plant. And and there's a lot of truth in that. So, and if, if black community is always the forerunner, so if it's one way in the United States, it's amplified. Because <clears throat> think of how many brothers have to walk around with this hyper-masculinity. You know, we're extreme. We're extreme in all the things we do, and this is what that's why we we end up dying so quick. We don't get a chance to just go through life and just do shit the normal way. It's all these ups and downs and mad pendulum swings. But well, well, that that's another example and manifestation of mental disorder. Yep. Matter of fact, they even have a term for it. They call it manic depressive. When you go through these major mm-hmm. swings and stuff like that, the, the, all of this stuff. Is highly dysfunctional. At least in white America, there are there are informed discussion. Because because to be fair, there are black women who talk about like Deborah Cooper, for example, talks about narcissists. But again, because black folks have an aversion to education, the reality is is that these discussions about narcissism, there's nothing informed about it from experts. It's just once again more folk wisdom crap. And so what ends up happening. Is that nothing is learned hmm. But but a lot of black men This is the reason why Preem and those other guys 
didn't feel any shame because they're narcissists. It, I mean, it hit me like such a bolt from the blue. I said, you know what? I got to cut all these motherfuckers off. I got to cut them off. That's the reason why I only had you on the air. Yeah. I said, I got to cut them all off, man. Because they don't even see. And that's what narcissists do. Narcissists are incapable of feeling shame. They're incapable of it. They're incapable of saying, damn, I see I made a mistake here. I'm sorry. When he went, And that's the reason why your blood pressure went through the roof. Because this is what narcissists do to people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I and, mean, I, and that's why I was like, you know what? I got to cut these motherfuckers off. I got to get I got to get away from them, man. I went into my appointment. They were like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I, I, I just give me a minute. <laughs> I yeah. Like, like, I couldn't believe the conversation I was having. Because at the, at the end of the day, we have to get back. We have to get to a point with black men to where we start having a gentleman's code, a, a, a code, a code of honor, something we carry. And there's a dude on YouTube. His name is King Ern. I laugh at him because he talks around, talk about he's snatching this person's honor, snatching that person's honor. But with the things you're tr- the things you're going to accomplish is going to it you're going to accomplish them um but i think you have to just like any other business you it, you're in a pruning process you have to sit back and reevaluate prune a li- prune a, li- a limb back so it can bear that fruit um especially as you continue to try to grow your platform and, and go into other things because these conversations are just not had on other platforms. I'm going to a convention in Atlanta in February, Menfluential, and I'm going to tell you, these content creators and this on the same YouTube are doing something completely different. When you go to VidCon, Vid Summit, it's completely different. And there are eyeballs on the black manosphere. So Getting your stuff the way you want it to be and lining up your support. See, what people, what black men tend to want to do is wait till you you made it. Then they want to come by and oh yeah, yeah now, you're a late adopter, yeah, yeah, and it's Man like yeah. yeah, and 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 that's and that ain't gonna work because you could have came along now. See, that's the thing you've removed all the real excuses. And now it's time for people to either shit or get off the pot. So putting your content to where people actually the want to consume it can actually put the five dollars, ten dollars up and make a make a decision. And dude, I just don't get what was so damn hard about it. Other than the fact you just said, like you said, you just don't want to. Well, no, they're narcissists. Narcissists, the, another key uh, feature of a narcissist is a sense of entitlement. True. They and feel my, entitled to well, shit. Well, my ex-wife had narcissistic borderline personality disorder, so I live with one. Gaslighting and just, just all it, just. Oh yeah, and it, that's exactly what it is. Well, mm-hmm. well, well, well. What, what you got to do, Obsidian? We, we, we got to find figure out another way to get consumers, and we got to do this. We got to. It's gaslighting, man. Mm-hmm. Narcissists uh, are expert at gaslighting. That's the reason why when y'all was going back and forth. And and I like you, I was pissed off too, but I said, you know what? I got this. I got Miss Maggie as a guest. I gotta do this. But I said, we're, we're, we're gonna come back to this. Cause this ain't over. And I ain't saying anything. I just let it go ahead and let it run. But I just made a mental note. I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do the show. But things are gonna change when I come back off of vacay next week. You best believe that shit. And mm-hmm. that's exactly what happened tonight. And, oh, and the other guy talking about you're not going to cut the feed off if 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 we only one patron short. Uh, yes, I am. And and see the problem. And to that guy, in case he is a patron, the fact that you even have to ask that question, you're not going to cut it off if he's a, a patron short. The standard was set. That's what it is. And see, that is what I want to see more from black male content creators set a standard and and demand your value and then we have to train black men to treat black men better and if it takes some combat that's what it's going to be but the, you don't when you give what the nice way of doing it don't work give a mouse a cookie or ask for a glass of milk trying to do it the other way just makes your hair gray and, and runs your blood pressure up no 
better to set your price at what it is and then you go figure out how to pay for what it is you want. Don't give me no sob story. Don't give me no, I'm a go get it. And then like I say on my channel, I, I've started setting high stand, higher standards for brothers. 60 hours a week obsidian you and i both know that's not monumental that's not herculean nope that's not herculean but to some dudes i folk watch that watch that much tv a week that's a fact i'm gonna tell you this right now on, on the life coaching i do with some dudes i say i want you to i want you to journal journal and then write down what you do and i show them look at how much you're wasting seven hours a day seven hours a day and then when you have when they, when they finally write it down, they realize, oh shit! I'm like, look at how much time you are wasting, just wasting. And then this is, and honestly, this is a big thing about not being raised with a daddy. One of the things that that, that has has plagued me the majority of my life was consistency and discipline, discipline in things that I did not want to do. See, I have passion and the things I want to do, I can do. But the things that I did not want to do, but I needed to do, those things were very diff difficult. And those were those masculine things. And I knew that inside of me, I was like, Jesus, this is because I did not have a strong father in my life. So you know what I did? I went out and found strong male role models. And I basically put myself in their hands and allowed and said, you know what? I submit to your authority. And if you got to pop me in my chest to check me or do whatever the consequence I had to be reparented but that that had that mean I had that to check myself it, it, this was in my late teen in my adult years but I knew I didn't want to go through life as this up down in the in, inconsistent lack and discipline you know feminine feminine energy kind of do because I didn't I just didn't like the way I knew there was something wrong and these dudes going to have to realize that you look at the outcomes in your life right now. You can, every one of the dudes that listen to these broadcasts, they can look and see where they're at right now. And you're not living your best life. You're not, you're not on the path where you need to be. The only thing that's consistent about it is you. And there's plenty of room to grow on, for a lot of the red pill kind of brothers on this, on, on this platform. But it's going to be, you got to get up and start doing the work. And that is where the the problem is. You're, you're, you're requiring them to actually do something. So you've been a doer all your life. You don't know how not to do. Yeah. 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 You can't, you can't be a narcissist and be a doer, man, like that. Cause, uh, you'll, you'll run up against stuff. You run up against problems. You have to solve problems. You have to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I figured out what 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 needed to be done, and I said, you know what, I, I, this is it. I'm 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 not going to let these guys ride anymore. I'm not going to do it. Well, I I said this that with the numbers your show does on the low end, I said three hundred dollars. It's actually closer to five hundred. You should be making you should be making one twenty five, one twenty five, one fifty. Um, annual for them, and then when you look, when I look at the amount of work you're doing, you're working two jobs. A lot of dudes are making, you know, 50, 60, 70. Well, I'm, I'm honestly, a lot of dudes are making 60 plus, but that's an eight hour old job. An eight hour, yep. you that you're working 12, 16 hour days. So if you're making 150. That's two seventy five thousand on our job. Now people get it twisted with the fact you working at home. That should not even come up anymore. Yep, those kind of things don't even need to be said anymore. They're never said on anybody else's channel. Nobody cares about what non black men or, or not, only black men get their pockets watched. Oh yeah, well, well, well. That's again narcissism. Why envy? Mm -hmm. Envy is part of what being a narcissist is all about. Is being envious. But the funny thing is, if what these dudes don't, what the dudes that sit back and fight this don't realize is when it, when the Obsidian Media Network, just imagine the impact it would have. Let's just say tomorrow you woke up. Let's say 2019, you woke up and your show went live at six o'clock. And then you were on, music was playing, donations are clicking in the chat room, people were watching, ads are running, people are getting back. <laughs> 
that would be a whole completely different vibe because the people who are sitting around watching, what are these black men over here doing? They would see an entire different environment. See, successful black men being successful, helping each other is a paradigm shift for a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes would rather just sit around and got this lone wolf mythology. Well, again, that's narcissism. Yep, yep, yep. Because narcissists can't work with teams. Yep. They can't work well with good with other people. They never have good relationship lives. And, and this is why when I like when I coach having you. a relationship. See, I understand the reason why companies prefer, or at least in the past, companies, you know, union work, whatever, they prefer to advance married men. I understand mm-hmm. why a lot of people look at that and say, well. They got a mouth, they got all the mouths of feet. That's true, but there's another reason because a married man, or failing that, a man that has a significant other has proven how to work well with others. Yes, sir. They have a skill, have being good in a relationship is a skill. Mm -hmm. And see, now it's gonna start cutting close to home because now you're starting to really hit guys where it's It's like being being red pill does not mean you're anti-social thank you so i'm like no you you're like well, how, somebody's asking how are you an obsidian y'all are, y'all are two different cats i'm like we're red pill in the same way we may you you i understand where he's coming from i've had to work in union environments at the end of the day i can stand on my own and do what i need to do but there's always the, when you're working, but you have to be able to work with others. And see, that is a skill. It is a skill that has to be taught or it has to be learned. Yep. And see, a lot of these dudes got to realize the last time they were forced to do anything, Obsidian, is when they were in school. In high school or in college, that's that's where the, the learning and development stopped. Well, guess what? You're still emotionally that age. You need to go out and learn how to talk to people, learn how to work with people, learn how to deal with people. Because in this in in this global in gig economy we're in right now, you cannot be an island talking to yourself and think you're going to be able to be successful. You're gonna put they're putting themselves in a very vulnerable position. That's why need for uh, black male media, especially a red pill channel like yours, is so valuable. Because it will attract that kind of mentality, and these guys need to take their car into the shop and get it tuned up, repaired, and then ready for the race. Everybody needs a little bit of something different, and at least your platform speaks specifically to black men. They need to. That's why I'm like y'all. That, I was like y'all don't realize what y'all have, and yeah. when if it was gone, then you're gonna start to realize. But unfortunately, some people don't learn it till it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really, it really hit me. I'll be honest with you. The back and forth with 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 Alan, mm-hmm. a self confessed narcissist. It really, really just like hit me in the head. A big part of the problem that we have in Black America is we have a lot of undiagnosed mental illness, and mm-hmm. and we have accepted it as normative, and it's and it's got to stop. This has got to stop, man. It is not healthy. It's dysfunctional. It's 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 atavistic. It has to stop. I, I will say this: that now I haven't. I've seen the, the that's going back on the O'Shea Rumble thing, right? The Sunday Rumble. Yeah. Okay. I haven't really. I, I've I read part of one of them, um, but that was about a week or so ago. Um, but what I will say is, I've always been an advocate for mental health. About, I speak about it openly on my channel. I think black men, black people need as much therapy. Descendants of slaves, we need therapy. And you got employee assistance lines at work. I'm gonna tell you, I after my divorce, after my divorce, I went to intensive out divorce care kind of stuff. I spent about twelve thousand dollars out of pocket just talking shit out and through. Going and then the, you know it's funny. Tom Likas talks about how he uh, was in therapy for so long, but then even when his life's hitting on all cylinders, he continues to go for maintenance. So oh yeah, we need to think of black people go to 
think of therapy like we think of the dentist. We go when there's a problem. And it should be, we need to be more consistent with this kind of stuff. But then again, what do we got in the black America? We either pray it away or, or we act like it or act like it don't exist. Yeah. We're going to have to really, black men are going to have to realize that you need to go sit down and talk through your issues. Me and C Boogie talked about this. And he was talking about the first thing that somebody had to drag him into counseling or something like that. And he said inside three minutes, he was like busted all up. But the so many dudes walking around with this fake persona and it just don't work for them. Well, that's another that's another telltale sign of a narcissist. Right. That's another telltale sign is that they will have a fake persona that they, they present to the world. And the moment that you prick that persona and scratch the surface, they don't know how to uh, that that's something that's deeply offensive to them. D- depending on the individual, they might even attack you. It's narcissistic rage. Yep. So uh what was I going to say? Um, that persona that... That's why a lot of people get twisted with you because when you talk about your lady friend, <laughs> they can't paint you in a picture of a dude that has no no woman in your life. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, how many guys actually have a, a woman in their life? And see, black men also need to get into the place to where they admit that they want some things and they need some things. Sitting around, I'm a rugged, I'm just by myself and I'm cool. No, you're not cool. You're not cool. There are some things that are wrong because you know when things are wrong, when you're sitting in having a, a, a conversation that should be able to have a rational answer and you can't get to it. Yep. That's why I'm like, we couldn't even get to a rap. I, I was like, how much do you think you should? I couldn't get a number. I'm like, are, are we kidding? What would, what would be so hard and just throwing the number out there? Yep. But that, I mean, I, that it, it was a indication that you're dealing with a narcissist. Well, that's why, that's why it hit me. I was like, I got to get rid of these guys. I, okay, I see clearly what's going. on. I want to thank you to the highest, Kevin, because you revealed. Like, <laughs> it, it remind me of I was a kid, right? So there was these. Um, I don't know if they did this in Oklahoma City, but here in Philly, when I was a kid, they used to have creature double feature, right? So, so on Saturdays. We were oh, like yeah. monster movies, you know, mm-hmm. Frankenstein and uh, the Mummy and right. Real Man, and all that. So, so I would watch these Dracula movies, right? Big mm-hmm. deal with that vampires, right? Right. And so you get to the climactic scene, and and, and, and it was uh Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Mm-hmm. They would make these movies from the sixties and seventies over in England, Hammer Films, right? Mm-hmm. So they would do their own rendition on Dracula and all the rest of it. So there was these gothic movies it was set in transylvania and europe and whatnot and so you get to the climactic scene with the vampire dracula or whatever and and the hero would take the uh the big draperies and, and you know snatch them mm-hmm. off and the sunlight would come in and right. the vampire, oh my god and it started <laughs> that's what happened with you the other day man you just ripped the the the, 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 the cover <laughs> off and the sunlight just came streaming in wow i, I will tell you that uh it was an out of body experience. I, I was, I, that bothered me because I was like, I don't, I don't need to get upset. But it was just, I, it was offensive. It was, it was, it, it was one of those kind. Of, you heard that comment. It's wrong on so many levels. But oh, yeah. you know what? I think, uh, but I honestly, I see a lot of good coming from it because at least now it, this kind of stuff can be addressed and. There's only two. There's only one way to really address it. You want blackmail media, like you said. You want it. Either you're going to support it, or you're not. But time for talk is over. The time for talk is over. The 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 all the research and the, none of that shit. Just do it. You got this. Is this is what you got? This is these are the platforms you have to work with. And. You got a choice. Either you support it or you go out and make your own platform. Because like you said at the end of the day, I just don't like people taking advantage. I really got a problem with that. Yeah. I really got a problem with people taking advantage of folks, especially somebody that and, and especially somebody that's working as hard as you are. That I just well, well, here's my thing. Here, here's my deal. 
All right, so there's a lot of channels that I don't find monetarily support on YouTube and elsewhere. I just, I'm just, I just sit back and just watch essentially for free. But here's the deal with me: mm-hmm. I don't say shit. Right. I don't say a, a mumbling word. I take whatever I get mm-hmm. because that's the way I was raised. Beggars can't be choosy. You gotta take what you can get. But see, a narcissist will want to argue you down about how you should give them better free shit. <laughs> I was thinking about I was like you know if you're a, a sports fan you're an Eagles fan you don't get you don't get to go into the general manager's meeting you just get your ticket and show up yep now now but at least you have but if you don't even go to the to the stadium you don't even buy a jersey you really can't talk about what's going on with the team and that's what was killing me is like you you you're sitting back Talking about how he, somebody should work harder to give you something for free. Exactly. You get a straight face. And see, here's the thing. Because I want to talk about narcissism. This is, I did, so many things came out of that show that day. I don't even think people really peeped what was going on. And I, and I just made notes. I was sitting there while, y'all, while you was, you know, admittedly, you know, eyes bulging out or whatever. I was making notes. <laughs> and I was like, this is some dysfunctional shit that's got to stop. And if it, if it means that I'm the lone man in the wilderness making the case, then so be it. Fuck it. It's got to stop. And 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 one of the things with narcissists is that they will, they honestly believe that you should work overtime for them for free because they're so great mm-hmm. that you should you should be feel honored to work for them and slave for them for free. Right. And see and see. Uh, 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 clinically what a lot of psychologists will, will advise is people just to get away from a narcissist but, but see here's my thing fuck that I'm gonna call this shit out early and often <laughs> I'm gonna let them know that I know that they are narcissists and I'm not gonna let them get away with being a fucking narcissist I'm gonna let them know that they are dysfunctional human being there you go well okay? I, I would say this that like I said my ex she was a borderline personality um getting away from her it was uh, being with her actually drove me into panic attacks all other kind of shit oh yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, that that shit will kill you and uh some of the what best thing I ever did was actually get away and then honestly even 10 years later it's like Jesus Christ how did I you're you're living in another world. You it will drive you. They, they will kill you. They, somebody's going to die. <laughs> it's usually, oh, yeah. it's usually, oh, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. I, I understand why psychologists advise what they advise because narcissists are destructive. They destroy mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. My thing is, I'm going to let them know that I know that they're narcissists. They're not going to get away with that shit with me. They're not going to get away with that with me. Oh no. No, 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 no. And and I'm going to be doing a show on narcissism. If I don't do it, I might do it tomorrow because uh, I was supposed to have on a Miri Brown, but okay. he, he just c- canceled out. So we're going to do it tomorrow. My, no, my show, the first of many shows on narcissism. And where I'm going to start is by calling these narcissistic motherfuckers on this show out. Because yeah. that's what they are. They're narcissists. Well, it promises to be a, a barn burner. And, uh, as someone who had to deal with a borderline personality, who actually, in my youth, I actually had narcissistic traits myself, and I realized them. And and thing is, I thank God I was raised with the people who um, I was. Thank God my grandmothers in my life, <laughs> my grandmother, my grandfather. Um. I shudder to think the kind of guy I would have been if I didn't have uh, such a strong spiritual, uh, such a strong moral family around me. Um, You can change. People can choose to change. But nobody changes without... I just... Guys need to want to get better. I'll just say that much. And And you know what? And if they don't, I'll tell you one thing. You don't let them kill you. Damn sure don't do that. What they gotta do is they go gotta go back gotta over go there. there. <laughs> That's right, go back over there. <laughs> That's what they gotta do. They gotta go over there. 
They're not going to do because that's what a lot of uh, dysfunctional people want. And this and this is a real problem in Black America. Black people who do want better for themselves are supposed to suffer in silence. The Black people who don't, on the basis that I'm Black, you Black, your mama Black. Fuck that. I'm not going to put up with their dysfunctional ass simply because we are the same skin color. No, because what's that going to gain you? It'd be like, I let you eat at my restaurant for free every day. And then what? When I'm out of bank, when I'm out of business, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm you going to give me my money back. And then they move right on to the next victim because that's what narcissists do. You remember M- MC Hammer? He was a contemporary of ours. I remember when Hammer but making all those millions, he put all his people on, paid everybody a thirty thousand dollars salary. And when yep. he had money problems, he said not one of them people turned around to him. All of them were narcissists. That's why and when he, I, that's what he did. That is why when I learned in my sales career, I don't cut discounts, I don't give deals, I don't give hookups. You no, 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 no. And especially I I I actually start charging customers a premium. And like black folks, I'm like, you know what? You know what we go through. Not only should you never ask me for something, when I, I deliver great enough service, you should actually refer me out because you know I do good business. Yep, but you're dealing with a narcissist. There's so <laughs> many narcissists. No, seriously, there are so many Cerulean Gray is right. The United States is a narcissism factory. And we are in black America. I would argue black America is narcissism central, well, both would, male and female. Well, I would tell you one of the valuable things I also learned in business. The customer is not always right in firing a customer. Uh, just like the movie Hitch, where he wouldn't take everybody on. That's right. I fire patrons. I, there are people who want to work with me, who have bu- book sessions and I, and I and something about our interaction I send them their money back. I'm like, uh, uh-uh. uh. I don't. If this is not going to be, if when you give me your money, you think I'm your hoe? <laughs> no. You pay for a service, and I'm gonna give you great service. But some people just take it to the. You know, you ever go to uh, out to a restaurant with somebody, and they feel like because they're giving a waiter a tip, they he should be their dancing monkey or some shit like that. Yep. yep. That's how black men end up treating black people. And I don't deal with folks like that. That's so, a yep. So, it's like to prey on people that they perceive as beneath them because mm-hmm. a lot of them have a superior attitude. That's 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 an, another trait of narcissism having a superior attitude, and they think that people that are beneath them they can abuse. Yep. So I I will quickly set a standard, cut stuff off. So I think it's. You know, good that you actually start setting your broadcast and stuff up like that. Because uh, you work too damn hard, man. You work too damn hard to, to to have to continue to ruin your voice, screaming at these dudes to do something they said they would do. Is that? I mean, it's not right. So. No, it's not. And uh, I, I, want, I don't want to keep you on the line too long because I know you got a lot of things you got to do. Uh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Obsidian Radio, the live stream show. I'm your host, me, Obsidian Ali. This is the private show, the first of what I think will be many to come because dealing with narcissists, very hard to get them to change. My special guest is Kevin Samuels, and we've been talking about some real shit tonight. Kevin, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out. I really appreciate it. No problem, brother. Thank you. All right. Uh, and we, and with, that, with that, we're going to end tonight's show. And uh, I'll see everybody on the air tomorrow. Or then again, maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Peace. Peace. You're listening to the best of the Obsidian Radio, the live stream show heard here only on YouTube. Check your local L Man Radio affiliate for show times and scheduled guests. If you like what it is that you hear on Obsidian Radio, by all means, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber or PayPal donor. All the details are going to be over on my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash Mumia Obsidian Ali. Do it now. You'll be glad that you did. Peace. Now available at Paperback and Kindle Unlimited. The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are struggling to find their way in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. Get your copy of The Man Crisis in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.